Amen. Amen. Never need him closer than right now. We, we have to feel as though that God is always present. Thank God for another preaching opportunity. Thanking God for all of our ministers, for all the trustees and deacons. Thank God for the pastor, first lady, all the members, saints, and friends. I thank God for your presence of being here and all that were not able to be here with us. To all of the veterans, happy belated Veterans Day. I, I didn't get a chance to call because I got tied up on the phone on Veterans Day uh, with my brothers. I have two older brothers and we were talking and uh, and the time just has gotten out. We, when we get on the phone after a long period of time, it's, it's hours. So uh, I have two older brothers that were they were in Germany. And so they were, we were just talking and talking. And we've had a, a very wholesome, loving conversation. Then I spoke with a, a buddy of mine that was also uh, in the bush. Um, and he loves to talk. And so I just had to listen. But I thank God for the time and the spirit had dwelled with me on that day, letting me know that where I was, I had no vision of seeing where I am today. Let us go into prayer. Most holy and gracious Father, we do thank you again for this day, being able to stand before your congregation to give your word that you have given unto me. Father, I ask that you continue to give me the strength, the guidance, and direction to deliver the word to this waiting congregation. We ask these and all of the blessings and no other name, but your son Jesus' name that I do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. You heard the scripture that was read to you. I just want to lift up these other two verses, verse 27 and verse 34. And he came by the spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him after the custom of the law. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary, his mother, behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many Israel for a sign which shall be spoken again. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearers of his holy word. You know that we're going into our revival. This is the revival period, and the thing for the revival is spiritual awakening. Spiritual awakening. And as I started to say, my spirit was awakening on Friday letting me know that it is a blessing for me to be here, not have been gone away so many years before. Our theme for this message is anticipation. Anticipation. For the, the laws of Moses is indicated that after 40 days that Jesus' birth, that the circumcision normally took place with the male, the Israel children. Simeon was the second of the sons of Jacob and Leah. Simeon was part of the group of his brothers, which who also Joseph put him into slavery and lied to Jacob. saying they had killed him when they have not, and they spread animal blood over his clothing. 
And many think that Simeon was a very old man. He would have been at this juncture. But we have to understand, Simeon had a relationship with God that he communion with him. And we have to understand what it means to have anticipation. Now, I know that when we're younger, we have anticipation of going into school. Even for employment, we have anticipation. Uh, we have anticipation when the first time that we kissed our wives or husbands. Anticipation. I love the fact that uh, we have to anticipate many things in life and we do it on a regular basis. We don't think about it, but we, we think about, we anticipate when we're going to get that paycheck. We anticipate the fact that there are bills to be paid and do we have enough to cover when we are going to make purchases of cars and homes and, and to do all types of things we are anticipating. I am truly joyful. I was anticipating being able to bring forth this message the Lord has placed on me over a month ago. I am anticipating the joy that God has given unto me, even though I was going through some trials and tribulations with my body, I am anticipating a recovery. So we have to make sure that these things are in line with the power of God on whom we serve not just today, but for well, that we have gotten ourselves into a situation that we have built this relationship with the Lord. Simeon had this relationship, even though things are being identified that he's done prior to being told that he is going to, according to the scripture, be able to see salvation before he died. Many of us have had encounters with the Lord and God has shown us things which we have not revealed to no one else. We are always in anticipation. We are waiting in constellation of Israel and the Messiah to come. Excuse me. They always are waiting, wondering as we are waiting for his second return. Christ is the author of his people in comfort. Christ was long in coming. He was long in coming. For they needed someone to help them through the difficulties, the slaughtering of animals for the sins that were created did not help the healing. But Christ was long in coming in order to help those that believe continue to wait and desire his coming and hoping for it. Anticipation. Anticipation. I, I, I would never forget at the time that my wife was pregnant and we were rushed to the hospital. And our first daughter was born. And they gave me her, how small she was. She was crying in my arms, and yet she reached out and touched my beard. It was black then, but she touched my beard with her little finger, and she stopped crying. And the joy that I had being able to hold our, our first child. You can imagine how 
Simeon felt being told that he would be able to see Jesus. And we have to understand, Simeon was there and acts with Barnabas at the church of Antioch. There was a prophet and teaching and only the spirit of the Holy Spirit was with them and they were prophesying. He wanted that no matter the time of the spirit of Christ in the Old Testament, the prophet did signs and receive an oracle that he should not die before he has seen the Messiah. How many of us have been in contact with the Lord? When Christ was presented, Simeon came by direction of the spirit into the temple. Simeon took up in his arms when he received the gospel record of Christ with faith, with love, that Christ in his arms. Can you imagine having this salvation in your arms? Christ. Simeon blessed God, which was Christ. And he rose above the love of life and fear of death. He had the opportunity to hold Christ in his arms. And he blessed God that, this saw, that he saw the salvation in his arms and the confession of his faith. The child in his arms was salvation. I, I looked at our second child when I held her in my arms. How magnificent is it that God has put things together that we are able to look at his creation and to look at the things that are being developed and allow us to be humble unto him. <laughs> As he allow our eyes to look and to hold our own children and allow us to know that there is love, there is joy, there is comfort. There is protection. There is empathy. There is caring, and as I held her, uh, tears began to form. When I look at how Simeon had held our Lord and Savior, how people that had not Christ, Look at those in this world who has Christ in their arms and salvation. This is a vision. We must not depart unto it, but give us charge to understand that we are servants unto the Lord. For we must not quit this service until we have fulfilled our time. Anticipation. We go about our daily chores. We anticipate, I, I, I must do this and, and I must get this taken care of. And, and I have to run to the store and I have to pick up these items. We are always anticipating. There's very few things that we do that we do not have anticipation of doing. We should anticipate what our relationship is with our Lord and Savior. We're trying to get into the kingdom. Are we anticipating? 
We're not getting into the kingdom of heaven. We're talking about spiritual awakening. We can't have that spiritual awakening without anticipation. We have to be able to get that from some source. And our source is Jesus the Christ. Jethro is the death of a good man. He departs as God's servant from the place of toil to that of his rest. <laughs> he departs in peace, peace with God, peace with his own conscience, and peace with death. For my eyes have seen thou salvation. This speaks of expectations of happy state after death with his sign on salvation. Death, it makes it a gain. Simeon has pleasant prospect concerning the world and the church. Joseph and Mary marvel at those things which were spoken concerning this child. They have reason to rejoice. For this child is set for the rising again for many in Israel and for the conversion of many to God. We as Gentiles are thankful. We should be joyous that we are included in that number, that we should be able to be able to be part of those that are going to make it in, if you are in Christ, that are dead and buried in sin. We should make sure that our sins have been forgiven, but we must ask, we must repent, come unto God and repent for our sins. We must make sure that we have the pleasure of being in Christ. Anticipation. What are we participating about today? Is it true Christ shall be a blessing to Israel? But there are some in Israel who are prejudiced against him. And it's pleasant to think that how many here are whom Christ, the Savior of life unto life, and said that others think that he is a savior of death unto death. His outward meaning, his holy character, his humbling doctrine and spiritual salvation proves equally offensive to the Pharisees and Sadducees. Jesus and his doctrine and people are still spoken against his truth and holiness are still contradictory and blasphemy. His preaching word is still the touchstone of man's character. Men will be judged by the thoughts of the hearts concerning Christ. Anticipation. Is it true Christ shall be a comforter to his mother, but a sword shall pierce through her own soul. He shall be a suffering Jesus. She shall suffer with him because of the nearness of her relation and affection. When he shall stand by his Christ and shall die, we may all, well thinking, cut her to the heart. For there is a feeling that mother fathers have for their children that if something shall happen, that it hurts them to the core. There's many things that we can say to our children, but our children have their own mind. And we must keep them in prayer for there's many things that we can say to our husbands and our wives, but they have their own minds. And we must keep them in prayer 
For no matter what we say, no matter what it is that we do, if we are not moving towards the cross, being able to seek salvation for ourselves, we are spending time in sin. You must anticipate the fact that we are moving towards New Jerusalem, that we are looking towards that crown. We must have anticipation to do that. And if we don't have Christ in us, then the spiritual awakeness that we are looking for is not going to be woke up. We must make sure that our relationship shows us that we are in Christ. As he walked on this earth, and he healed those that were blind, and he healed those that were lame, and he rose those from the dead, he hung his head upon the cross. Water and blood can run down his side. He was placed in another man's tomb. And on the third day, on the day, he got up and had all power given unto him as he stood on the land sea. God has given him the power. Jesus Christ came with anticipation of dying for our sins. We must give homage unto him every moment of the day in Jesus to Christ. Thank you, our Lord, for all that he has done for us. And God for sending his son, his son for taking our sins away. We love the Lord with all our hearts because Christ came with anticipation of saving us from sin. Thank you. Let us bow our heads, most holy, gracious Father. We do thank you. For this message, that's something that was said. We touch someone's heart. Allow them to understand that if they are not in Christ, that they would come to Christ. Father, we ask that you continue to guide and keep us in no other name but your son, Jesus' name, that I pray. Amen. Amen.